I'm Ashton Addison from Event Chain for Investment Pitch Media and FinTech News Network. And today on Blockchain Interviews, we have Jazir Brooks, the CEO of SIFChain. Jazir, welcome to the show and thanks for taking the time to be here today. Hey, thanks for having me. You're very welcome. I'm excited for this discussion to deep dive into DeFi, into what SIFChain is working on. And let's just kick it right off with what exactly is the focus of the SIFChain platform? What are the problems that your team is solving for? Yeah, um, so it's designed to be an omni-chain DEX. What I mean by that is it basically connects to every blockchain. I think our team has signed up for 20 to 25 different cross-chain pegs. Uh, we're just going to build those out in parallel. And if we can do that, they can, when, then we can get decentralized um, flow of cryptocurrencies across chains uh, to the point where uh, people can think more about the DAO that they're working in and less about the chain that they're working on. Mm -hmm. um, so I'd say that's the important thing. We also want to have margin trading and limit orders, which we see as a good complement to AMMs, which we'll also have. And those three will provide the, the components of our crypto economic program. Mm -hmm. Great. So building in a decentralized exchange with cross blockchain compatibility, obviously there's a few hurdles to jump with that, right? And right now the DeFi space seems to be predominantly with Ethereum and there is some platforms that are trying to do some cross chain, but this sounds like a huge undertaking. So props to you for that. Uh, how is the project going so far? And you know, what hurdles have you had to face as you've gotten to this point? Yeah. Um, it's going pretty well. We've got a test net up live monkey bars. So you can check, take a look at that. Um, we packed out at a um, hundred validators, which is the max we can host on Cosmos right now. Um, so pretty solid. People are testing the Ethereum uh, to SIF chain compatibility. So you can actually do cross chain transactions um, right now. Um, a lot of what we're doing right now is uh, basically around the infrastructure build out and testing. Um, so some DevOps work and writing a substantial number of tests. Um, so that's really where we are in terms of completion. But a lot of the core work uh, has been done thanks to Cosmos and then thanks to Peggy, which is some cross-chain software that we built earlier for uh, Ethereum. Um, I'd say as far as goals, we really just want to wrap this thing up, get get mainnet out uh, live. And um, yeah, I'd say if we can do that, we're, we're off to the races and people have a usable product. Mm -hmm, definitely. And now with decentralized exchanges, there are there is this solution that you're bringing in where you no longer are just stuck with ERC-20 tokens moving back and forth and you can move to all the other coins and just really open the floodgates. Um, and there are other projects that are looking to do this because obviously this is a huge problem in the industry being stuck on just Ethereum. So as you continue to grow, release the platform and you're looking for mainstream adoption, you know, what are the unique selling points and value propositions that, that SIFChain is going to bring in from other cross-platform decentralized exchanges? Yeah, I mean, I'd say no one's really trying Omnichain. That's a huge one for us. Um, we know most of the other cross-chain projects. ThorChain, obviously, uh, met many members of our team were heavily involved with. Um, there's uh, Rosetta from Coinbase. There's Chainbridge. There's Poly Network. We're, we're pretty familiar with a lot of them, but no one are target none of them are targeting the number of uh, chains that we're targeting. Um, that's a huge bit. I'd say there's another bit in that we're basically among the first to get connectivity to the Cosmos network itself proper. So you'll be able to take the chain, the tokens that you uh, bring onto SIF chain and use them with other uh, Cosmos chains like Kava or Terra or mm -hmm. Akash or the Cosmos hub. Um, and so I'd say that's another really huge drawing point. Um, I'm unaware of any really solid um, decentralized exchanges that do margin trading and also limit orders. Um, you know, there's some that do one or the other, but I think that that bit is still in its um, infancy. So yeah, I would say those are the things that to me stand out as key differentiators for SIFChain. Mm -hmm. That's that's great. Uh, and also you're moving into the DeFi space with decentralized exchanges. There's a lot of other functionality for decentralized finance, uh, whether it's swaps, providing liquidity, decentralized trading, cross-platform. Can you talk a little bit about how that works? And is that the prime, like one of the sub primary functions of the exchange? Or is it really your focused main focus is, is swapping coins cross platform? Yeah, so um, I think the way to imagine this is that there are two key components of SIF chain. One is SIF node itself, which runs uh, the nodes that people use. Uh, and that's an application specific blockchain, which is designed for the specific application of swapping tokens. Um, 
So you've got your liquidity pool, people pool in that, everyone's used to that. And then they actually swap tokens against that liquidity. Um, there's a separate component, which is PEGI, which is around moving uh, tokens to and from other blockchains. And so for Ethereum, um, there's basically um, a an extension of Tendermint consensus on Ethereum. So we have a PEGI smart contract and that smart contract allows you to uh, send token, like you can, you, it can receive tokens uh, from the Ethereum network. And when it hosts those tokens, um, it has the capacity to then mint a pegged version of that token on uh, SIF chain. And so that's an entirely separate piece. Um, right now they happen to be running in the same uh, code, but I'd say as soon as we get the chance, we're going to split that out into its own blockchain with its own uh, separate validator um, set. And uh, that'll be used um, in conjunction with IBC, with the inter-blockchain protocol. So mm -hmm. that's not quite done yet. That IBC protocol is not done. We're waiting on the Cosmos guys to finish it out. Once that happens, um, we'll set that up. And so, yeah, I'd say SIF chain proper is really designed for swapping pegged tokens. Um, but you can take those pegged tokens um, you can move them back and forth with their original chain. You can also send them to other chains in the Cosmos ecosystem as well. Mm -hmm. Very cool. And now I, I saw recently that the SIF chain team closed uh, a $3.5 million SAFT sale. So first of all, congratulations to that. That's a big step forward. And I know that you have some major investment partners that you're working with. Can you talk a little bit about the partners that uh, have believed in the project from the beginning, are invested, and, and what are the next steps now with that SAFT sale complete? Yeah, I'd say I'm really proud of the investment um, group that we put together. Um, there are the, the, the full list is on our website. You can just check out at sifchain.finance. Um, but yeah, a lot of a lot of heavy hitters, um, a lot of groups uh, like Alameda that really understand market making. Um, they were surprisingly, uh, you know, interested in doing this on a decentralized platform. Even with Serum, there's just so much opportunity um, to do, uh, you know, DeFi in, in, with a, with a bunch of different uh, styles and um, and structures. I do. I know I mentioned that our core protocols, are, our core features are sorry, our margin trading and uh, limit orders and regular swaps. But we are interested in doing other things like connectivity with other chains. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, Solana for Serum compatibility would be a great one. Um, but there are a bunch of other things that we've sort of discussed. Um, I'd say, yeah, Mechanism's another um, VC I'd really love to call out for being really thoughtful for working with us from the ground up. Um, Andrew Kang's extremely notable on, on crypto Twitter. Um, and he's not just sort of the DGEN kind of trader people that he's he appeals to, but actually a lot of really thoughtful um, analysts as well. And so. I'd really say he, he's been a, a solid thought leader, not just him, but, but the entire mechanism team. Um, NGC, another really well-known uh, firm. They've been extremely great with us for uh, design, um, for protocol, for feedback. Um, I can call them you know, whenever. Um, they, they've been really helpful for our promotion um, in Asia. I'm super, super appreciative of that. So yeah, I'd say we have a lot of pretty good partnerships. Um, we've also started some sort of behind the scenes things with uh, with our investors around connectivity to say centralized exchanges or mm -hmm. or to other decentralized exchanges. I, I mentioned you know briefly some ideas, but that's kind of scratching the surface. Um, I do think that we are we're very very interested in decentralized governance and a decentralized control, but we're also really interested in leveraging some of our larger partners and their capacity to bring solid liquidity or volume. So it's definitely stay tuned for announcements on that. Mm -hmm, definitely. And I'm glad that you mentioned the decentralized governance there. Um, and that sort of leads me to, you know, talk about how these decentralized projects really are, can be community run, you know, with the governance and with the growth of it. And, but as well, you sort of need to have the economics in there so that people are excited to use it and want to use it. And sometimes at the beginning and the early stages, you need to either incentivize or, you know, encourage people to become adopters, liquidity providers and validators. Now, d do you guys have a strategy for having that incentivization or do you expect with all of these competitive advantages that there will be organic growth in those areas as well? Yeah, I think the organic growth will come for sure. We're definitely getting a lot of traction. Um, we also want to have a pretty robust liquidity mining program. I'll spill uh, some of the beans now because I don't think we've talked about this publicly, um, but this will be um, an exclusive for this program. Um, it's designed with some of the feedback that a few notable people, Andrew Kang being one of them, have discussed on Twitter. Um, I'd say the, the multi-coin guys have also heavily influenced us. Um, the general gist here is that we want to reward validators swappers and also um, liquidity providers. And we want to do it in proportion to 
the amount of volume that they give to us, either in held assets for stakers um, and it, uh, providers for traded or swapped assets for the swappers. Um, we also want to do it um, in proportion to the amount of time that they, they're doing it with us. So, um, you know, if you're holding for a longer amount of time, you're going to get more uh, liquidity mining rewards. And so mm -hmm. we haven't announced mm -hmm. many details for that publicly, but we've got some pretty solid crypto economics, I think, behind it. Um, we don't want to just kind of offer out tokens um, without making sure that people deliver value in exchange for it. Um, mm -hmm. I, I showed uh, this to, you know, a, an investor just to get some feedback and like they were thinking, hey, we'd love to invest um, just based on the, the liquidity mining program alone. So we're hoping that, you know, when we do launch it, um, it, it is still at the cutting edge. But yeah, I'd say we have not been as thrilled by some of the liquidity mining programs we've seen from groups like like Uniswap, where it's just a flat fee. Um, mm -hmm. Andrew Kang discusses this in more detail on Twitter, and we've really taken a lot of the improvements that he mentioned to heart. Mm -hmm. Wow, that's really exciting and uh, great to break the news on the show as well. And now talking about rewards, I want to specifically mention you know the SIF chain token and, and how that governance and incentivization, everything works within the protocol. So if you could really just touch on you know when people that are helping to provide value to this system uh, they're also going to be interacting with the SIF chain token what are the main functions there and how does it create a sustainable ecosystem for SIF chains platform overall yeah um, it's good I think to talk about row on the SIF chain token so it serves a couple of purposes first and foremost it secures the network so validators need to stake it and without it it just can't run no matter what so um, it is the currency that our validators are using for block, and it's what they'll receive um, as a function of block rewards. Um, and I'd say the validator community, as I mentioned, has been um, pretty strong and is showing substantial interest in the token. So that's a huge um, demand base right there. Then there is um, the liquidity providing. Um, so if you are uh, providing a token, then it doesn't matter which token you have, you're doing it in a pool that has 50% row on 50% so some other token. And it's probably worth uh, doing a quick walkthrough for what that means crypto economically. Let's say you've got your, your uh, Bitcoin and you want to swap it for USDT. Well, you're actually doing Bitcoin to row on and then row on to USDT. Um, so the row on token would just be used no matter what. Um, all of our pools are equally weighted with row on. Um, and everyone who swaps is going to pay some fee as a result. So mm -hmm. it makes sense to be a row on holder if you believe in SIF chain as a network overall. Um, another thing to keep in mind is that because these are equally weighted pools, we have more of a direct connection between the TVL, the total value lock for external tokens, and the price of row on. So let's say we've got $10 million of external assets um, from Bitcoin to USDT to ETH or whatever else. Um, that means that there has to be at least $10 million worth of Rowan in those same pools because they're equally weighted and an arbitrager would definitely even them out if, if mm -hmm. um, that wasn't the case. Um, and so that really gives our community a target to, to work for um, in terms of getting TVL locked so that they can see the appropriate rise in Rowan. Um, and then we are like, unlike a standard Ethereum project, right, we are running on our own sovereign chain. Uh, which is mm -hmm. validated, as I mentioned, and secured by Rowan. And so we know that we want a, our validators to stake at least as much as is on chain. So if you've got 10 million in external tokens, that means you've got 10 million in Rowan, 20 million combined being secured by the network, which means you need 20 million at least securing the network. So mm -hmm. if you've got that 10 million in external assets, that means that you've got like $30 million on SIF chain alone in Rowan, not counting things that are in cold storage or on other exchanges or so forth. Um, and so this logic, I'd say, is um, something we're pretty proud of because it means that um, there's much more of a direct connection between um, usage and price for the token. Um, we did a lot of analyses with this back when we, we copied it, frankly, from Thorchain, which has a similar model. Um, and this does hold up under rational profit-seeking agents, at least according to a multi-agent sim simulation that uh, the Gauntlet Network team did. So uh, we're pretty happy about that. Um, that's the second big use uh, as a settlement token. Then there's also the validator. The third thing that it makes sense to keep in mind is that it's a governance token. So mm -hmm. you use Rowan to vote on changes to the protocol. And we hope to have a really robust DAO. We've done some communication in the past about what that means, um, put out a pretty long speech about how that relates to open source development, to computer-aided governance, to what we call teal organizations, uh, self-managed, self-organized um, organizations. And I 
I think we take that to heart. Um, we definitely want to have a robust DAO. So if you are inter interested in decentralized governance, that's another reason you'd be interested in the Rowan token. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thanks for that. And now I want to talk about the next steps. Uh, you're, you have the testnet launch. You're moving towards the main release. Uh, do you have a time frame on that? And, and what are the next steps for you and your team right now? Yeah, so um, we will probably hit say, um, January or so in of next year. Um, it's a tentative date. Uh, we're not quite sure, but I think that's when we'll be able to release the chain um, for for mainnet and live live token value transfer. Um, at this point, it's pretty much entirely um, around uh, like testing. We brought in like a separate external testing team. We have an audit team. Um, we're talking to potentially another auditor um, to, to work alongside. So we, we have uh, dual coordination. Uh, we're setting up a bug bounty program. Um, so that's pretty much it. We've already started taking some of our issues and throwing them up on Gitcoin. So if you are an enterprising engineer and you just want to you know, tinker around with the code but make money for it, um, we encourage you to go to Gitcoin. Um, any of the issues that we have that are bugs, um, you know, we're happy to compensate for, um, you know, assuming we've got a Gitcoin grant out for them. Um, so yeah, it's it's pretty much entirely about putting the pieces together. Uh, a lot of the core work we'd already done um, on Peggy and you know building out uh, SIFChain app using Thorchain as a re reference reference implementation uh, was not too bad. Um, it's it's basically just you know testing under multiple regimes, stress testing, documenting tests, document just documenting the product in, in general. Um, that's 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 the deal. Uh, so mm -hmm. we'd love any collaboration from any open source developers who are interested. Definitely. And now you mentioned the Gitcoin for other community members that are just looking to follow along leading up to the launch or to get involved in the social communities. Uh, where are your main communities and how can they get involved? Yeah, Telegram's obviously a big one. Um, we also have a newsletter. You can check that out on our website. And then I'd say Discord has a lot of the meat and potatoes for engineers. Mm -hmm. Great. Jazir, I will leave those links in the description box below. Thank you so much for the time. It's been a pleasure speaking about SIF Chain. All the best with the launch and everything else moving forward. And let's follow up in the near future. Yeah, Ashton, thank you for having us.